In today's Big Bang, make your own film set, complete with erupting volcano. Plus the story of how we tamed fire, eventually. And a machine that helps you decide what to do. And welcome to the Big Bang. First, as usual, a puzzle. Can you turn a strip of paper into a star? Hmm. Go on, give us a clue. It's not difficult. Mm, I think it is. Strip of paper into a star. No, it's not. It's really not. Look, saying it's easy doesn't make it easy. No, it's not difficult. I'm missing something. Yeah, I think you are. Put your brain to work on it, and you put your brain to work on it, and I'll tell you the secret at the end of the show. OK, start positions, everybody. Stand by. Walking around with a dinosaur. Scene one. Take one. And action. Long ago, immense creatures roamed this planet. They were truly masters of their land. But that land turned against them. Get the volcano ready. Stand by for fantastic volcanic explosion. Cue volcano! Here it goes. Wow! And the lava did spew forth upon the land. And the dinosaurs did get covered in molten lava. Ah! Ah! I am a dead dinosaur! Help us! Help us! Ah! And cut. Fantastic. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> We're making a movie and I'm the camera woman. And I'm doing the special effects. Now, your mum probably won't let you make volcanoes in the house. It's best to do it outside because it can be really messy, but you can find all the stuff to make a volcano in your mum's kitchen. You'll need some acetic acid, in other words, vinegar. You'll need some sodium hydrogen carbonate, in other words, baking powder. You'll need some industrial strength cleaning fluid, washing up liquid. And you'll need some food colouring. Sorry, I couldn't think of a funny way of saying that. And now, of all these things, the food colouring is the most dangerous. Don't get it on your clothes, otherwise you'll never get it off. Now, I've taken three dessert spoons of baking powder and a good squirt of washing up liquid and the food colouring so it looks like authentic molten lava and then give the thing a good stir with a garden cane. It's a good idea to turn your mixture into a smooth runny paste so you'll get a fantastic volcanic eruption. Then when your mixture is really smooth and runny pour it into a plastic bottle. Now what's going to happen here is that the baking powder will react with the vinegar, producing lots of carbon dioxide gas. That gas will froth up the washing up liquid, forcing it out through the neck of the bottle at an incredible speed. But to make sure that your eruption is truly volcanic, take your bottle top and put a hole in it and you will get a fountain of magma. Now it's time to add other vinegar. So, Pour in as much vinegar as you can. You'll probably get an entire bottle of vinegar into your plastic bottle. Keep an eye on the mixture. Make sure it doesn't start frothing up until you've got the lid on. Then quickly get the lid on, make sure it's tight, and retire to a safe distance. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Now, look at the mess it's making, which is why you should never do this indoors like we've done. Oh, I'm going to have to do so much cleaning up. The film set is basically a load of sand which we've piled up around the pop bottles to make them look more like volcanoes. We've also added some play trees, some dinosaurs and some blue plastic to make a lake, so it all looks pretty prehistoric. Right, you ready to shoot the final scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, here's some more special okay. effect fluid. Load up the Say when. volcanoes. Yeah, in it goes, uh, before it starts erupting, because we want to get the eruption on camera. 
Um, right, mine's loaded. Right, Lid's on. Back to the camera. Quick, quick, yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, Walking around with the dinosaur, final scene. Uh, action! <laughs> oh, look, there it goes. Oh, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Oh, oh goodness, look, that, that is fantastic. Right over that Denosaurus. <laughs> is the set big enough? Oh, and the second one's going. <laughs> look at that. Two at the same time. It's Our dinosaur disaster movie is currently playing on the Big Bang website. And the dinosaur's days were numbered. And cut. Practicing yoga, Cynthia? Got a stone in your shoe, Ernest? Ah, oh, I see. Flamingos. Here are two things about flamingos. Can you tell which one is the big fib? Fact or fib? The flamingo gathers its food by sticking its head in the water and swinging its beak around. This fills its beak with water mixed with tiny shrimp and algae. Then it squirts the water out through the bristly bits in its mouth, leaving a gob full of tasty food. It's the same way whales eat. Fact or fib, wild flamingos aren't pink, they're bright yellow. But when a flamingo is trying to attract a mate, it turns its feathers pink to get itself noticed. Very fetching, Cynthia. So, which is the big fib? Make your choice now. Well, flamingos do eat the same way as whales, so the big fibber is Cynthia. And flamingos aren't yellow at all, but they're not naturally pink either. They're white. Their food contains chemicals called carotenes, which are also found in, yes, carrots. It's the carotenes that turn the flamingo's feathers pink. <laughs> Tens of thousands of years ago, people had to live in caves and primitive shelters. Life was very hard. They wore animal skins to keep themselves warm. But the one thing they craved, more than anything, was fire. You need three things to make fire. Fuel, oxygen and heat. Unfortunately, back then, the only source of heat available was, well... <laughs> lightning! There wasn't a safe way of making fire. Eventually, they discovered this stuff. Flint, which makes starting a fire much more easy. The flint was used to make sparks. Bang, stone, make and this was the method they used to make fire for thousands of years. Until just a couple of hundred years ago, when we started to understand chemistry. People were discovering that the world was made of many different elements. And if you mix some of those elements together... Thank you, sir. You're a right tough. Make no mistake about it. You get rather interesting results. One metal, potassium, heats up when it's mixed with an acid. Isn't it marvellous? They put some metal on this stick and all I have to do is put the stick in this bowl. <coughs> but it was a bit tricky getting the mixture just right. The next idea they came up with was the Promethean match. Potassium coated paper wrapped around a glass bead containing the acid. Thank you, Toff. You're all right, sir. Mate, no mistake. To mix the two together, you just crack open the glass. Unfortunately, some people tried cracking the glass with their teeth. <coughs> then a bright spark had a big idea. If you put a mixture of potassium and another metal called antimony on the end of a stick, <gasps> and then strike that stick on a rough surface, It'll catch fire. There you go. Thanks, Sir Toff. You were a right mistake. 
it was a huge success. The very first match factory opened to make the new friction lights. Unfortunately, the prototype was somewhat deadly. If the air was too moist and warm, the match would spontaneously burst into flames. Then, a clever chemist had the bright idea of separating the main ingredients. He put some on the end of a match, he put the rest on the striking surface. This was the world's first safety match. Finally, a convenient and safe way of making fire. A really big idea. Life in the 21st century is difficult. There are just so many things to do, so many options. Are you having difficulty making decisions? Then you need Decision Master 3000. Simply invert and wait, and the advanced silicon technology will decide for you. Remember, it's not available in the shops. And that's because you have to make it yourself at home. You'll need a couple of crisp tubes, a couple of plastic cups, some sand, bits of cardboard, a kebab skewer, and some tape. Start off by cutting the holes out of the bottom of your crisp tubes and then cutting a couple of notches in one of them. Cut some circles of card out that fit just inside the crisp tubes. You'll need two of those. Now get a kebab skewer and glue the semicircles round the kebab skewer all the way round until you end up with a rotor. Now that fits really nicely into those notches we made earlier in the crisp tube and it should sit there and spin. Now seal the whole thing up with the second crisp tube and tape round it. Get a couple of plastic cups and cut a hole so that the hole is slightly off centre. Now when the sand is in the cup it will pour through the hole and hit the rotor, weighing it down so it goes down like that, which spins the kebab skewer, which will spin the arrow to make our decisions. So, putting it all back. We don't need the sand yet. Just get a cardboard disc that fits exactly over the top of the plastic cup. Take that in place, then turn it the other way up. Pop that in again so the hole is in one side. Now pour in your advanced silicon technology, your sand, Seal that up, and you have your Decision Master 3000. All you need to do now is make the discs. That's just a big disc of cardboard with some tacky blue stuff I've just pressed it against here so it's stuck in place. And uh, this disc I've made to help me decide what to spend my money on. Uh, this arrow is made of cardboard as well, and it spins freely. So, when you turn your Decision Master 3000 up, the sand runs through the crisp tubes, hits the rotor, spins it, which spins the kebab skewer, and makes the arrow go round. Oh, go on, computer games, go on. I've been struggling with the puzzle Violet set at the start of today's Big Bang to turn a strip of paper into a star. I've had lots of goes, but I haven't done it yet. Any ideas or not? Yeah, well, you kept saying not a lot before, so I tried to tie a lot of knots. Yes. So that gave me a star, and the nearest I got was this pentagon. Yes. Yes, it is, or yes, it isn't. Look, I'll show you. You're absolutely correct to tie a knot in your paper, and yes, you do get a pentagon. Make sure the creases are well creased, and flip over the top flap of paper. Yeah, but it's still just a pentagon. Yeah, but it's a well-known fact that stars only come out at night when it's dark. So... Oh, look at that. I can see a star yeah, there now. Yeah, it's the folds of paper that make the star. Brilliant. If you like that puzzle, there are plenty more on the Big Bang website. As well as details of everything that we've done in today's show. That's it for now. We'll see you next time on... The, the Big, Big Bang! Bang. In the next Big Bang, make this spinning top maze game. Meet the man who used ice and sawdust to build a battleship. And make your own remote control that's rocket powered. <laughs> <laughs>